got on here and we came is that uh, we, we are looking for somebody to move refuse on that and um, I'm going to ask the, the planning officers to provide some, uh, some words for refuse or uh, in respect to that somebody's got something prepared that they want to move. Okay, so are you happy for me to ask the planning officer to, to come up with some words for refuse on? Chair, I think what we'd be asking for really is something to say that we want the original refusal enforced. I think that needs to be some planning words to, to, to apply, but that's really what I think we're going to do for Chair. Thank you, James. Uh, three in Chair, the previous reason for refusal for the, for the 2016 application read the proposed building is disproportionately large in comparison to the original building which it replaces, constitutes an appropriate development. This results in an intrusive structure which is out of character with the surrounding area and the rural nature of the site and has an adverse impact on the open screen belt. The proposals are therefore contrary to the National Plan Policy Framework, paragraph 89, and Policy GP2 of the Rural Industry Development Plan. Okay, would somebody like to move that refusal? Um, I'll take Sorry. Ian. Sorry, um, Ian. Just commenting on that. <coughs> Uh, I think it would be helpful, Chair, to future committee members and to the public accounts to the applicant if, if, in case the applicant does actually pay any attention to what we say. If we say as well that we note the comments and the findings of the planning inspector yeah. as well as this. Okay, can you move that in? Yes, happy to. Okay, Kathy, you want to second that? Okay. The addition of E is wrong. Is that, is that a normal? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I don't think we could put that as a reason for refusal. We could certainly.
can try this one the layout just from the plan that's on there. So you can see the big detached part, part of the dark hashed area where the site plan is. The number 26 will, will be demolished and the access road will be just to the, to the right of that. And a new book will off on the signal footprint to number 26A. Just to the rear boundary of 26A to 26C will be two bungalows alongside there. And then the detached house will be located further back within the site with a row of semi-detached houses. The access road will open up into a small courtyard area with a series of private drives that lead to each plot. So there's sufficient parking for each property this in a central area. Some of the trees that are already positioned within the site, there's been a tree seed survey carried out and it's been assessed that most of the trees that will be removed are of poor quality and can be replaced by the landscaping reserve matter and a condition with better quality trees. None of the trees are protected within the site. The, the good quality trees along the eastern boundary where the garages are to the right hand side um, will be retained. Um, as I say, landscaping is a reserved matter, so details, if this outline is approved, will be sub submitted and approved subject to that reserved matter. There are no highway objections. The scheme does accord with the planning policies and subject to the proposed conditions is recommended for approval. There are two petitions of objection. Thank you. Um, do we have both uh, lead petitioners here? I'm here. So we just have one, one lead petitioner. If there, yes. is, there isn't two. The, the other lead petitioner chair couldn't make it tonight. Okay, so I, thank you. Reason. Thank you for that. Sorry. Okay, as, as lead petitioner for, for this um, application, would you like to come forward, okay. please? So you can just point out um, okay, the water okay. is melting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's close to the, the heat from the radiator, so I thought we'd just turn around a bit. Yes, of course. Well, you might just fall. significant repercussions to our environment and wildlife and going far beyond. This is not brownfield. It's never had buildings requiring planning consent. Neither is there a barren, lifeless and featureless farmer's field in the green belt that these desperately want to stop being built upon. This is far more vitally important because of the trees and their associated wildlife in a predominantly urban area and especially so because all of our local street trees are dead or dying due to the poor maintenance practices of workmen who routine, routinely strip the bark off for their swimmers and live on truck and motors. These trees and their associated wildlife, including protected species, have apparently been discounted as if they don't exist. The local residents, however, who unanimously signed my petition, most definitely disagree with the well-paid professional experts. We're on council claim that they never approve of the cutting down of established trees without good reason. We expect you to honour your pledge. The roosting bats have been disregarded as merely common and not worthy of protection. It's against the law, however, to move a resident bat from a lost space, but apparently it's now acceptable to destroy a magnificent tree that is searched to a natural roost according to these surveys. They've suggested that alternative roosts can be installed on their proposed buildings, but the time lapse between the destruction of the trees and the completion of the houses would mean that the bats will be long gone and probably dead. 
never to return to an area now devoid of mature trees. New trees to replace the old would take a century or more to reach maturity. It might come as a surprise to them, but batch generally choose for themselves where they want to live, and it won't be within this proposed development. The tree survey is relatively accurate as to the the trees, but I totally disagree with their grades of quality. Most of their plan is coated in grey, meaning trees of low quality in their opinion, and I was insulted when I discovered that they even included in that category one of my own magnificent trees in my garden, which overhangs the site boundary. The two tallest trees on site, a poplar and a sycamore, are designated in red and recommended for destruction. But nature doesn't care about human perception of quality. Birds don't care for trees in symmetrical or lollipop shapes. Aesthetics are not important to that black bird, which is singing its heart out with joy, right at the very top of the tallest tree, late on a midsummer evening, for all to hear in the locality. Variety is the true art of Mother Nature, and far superior to any art by mankind. Trees deemed low quality in a woodland context will be far more vital in urban situations due to their relative scarcity. A single urban tree in any condition is far more important than most woodland trees because of their public means to buy. The largest pear tree on site is undoubtedly worth many thousands of pounds. Another reason for the recommended destruction of that poplar is because it's touching one of the garages, but those garages nearest to it are redundant and haven't been used for years, mostly because they are too narrow for modern cars, and many years ago the council were considering demolition of those garages. Expensive surveys are not justification alone to allow money to determine the sacrifice of trees and wildlife. When I first learned of these plants three years ago, I emailed Eric Bowman, the tree preservation officer, with some urgency, requesting a blanket TPO on the area to protect the trees. His reply was awful. He stated that the primary requisite for a TPO is visibility from a public place. None of the trees on the site could be readily seen from any of the four roads around that site, he said. My photos here, however, are all taken from outside the site, and the majority are views of the trees from the surrounding four roads, and my bedroom, etc. The trees are clearly vis visible between the houses, over the fences, when looking into the garage here on King's Drive, and ironically, even over the applicant's own single-storey bungalow. So have the, one minute left. Some of the trees are taller than two-storey houses, so Eric Bowman's statement is obviously wrong. What is more, Thingwall isn't an effluent conservation area with massive trees, so the few trees that we are surviving are therefore far more important. Surely not only the rich of Oxford and colleagues, etc., are entitled to all of the health and environmental benefits of the tree in general, do we not deserve the pollution absorbing, carbon capturing, oxygen giving, flood risk reducing, wildlife habitat enhancing and therapeutic benefits of these trees? This government is fairly completely on its own world regarding pollution levels, so we all need all the trees that we can get. One vital aspect that's been known so far is that King's Drive, where I live, is prone to flooding in the back gardens even in the summer. Without the flood mitigating abilities of these trees, we would be flooded far more often and for longer in time. The whole area is a circular that will cease to be affected with so much concrete of it. There has not been an environmental impact assessment conducted despite the obvious necessity. If approval is given and the trees are destroyed, the wildlife will also perish. It's now accepted that wildlife corridors are essential. That means wildlife in my own garden will also diminish, despite my best efforts to provide habitat and refuge, etc. There's no surprise that this country is suffering Mr. massive species depletion when species such as this have been considered for approval. Thank you very much. You did really well to get so much in. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, everyone's welcome to see the rest of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Simon. Can you turn the mic off? Yes, please. Is the applicant or agent here? Would you like to come forward, please? Um, if I could just ask you to state your name, please. Uh, yes, Colin Jones. Can you put your microphone on, please? Tom Jones, I address 10 Rectory Lane, Lower Hesel. Uh, I'm the agent for this application. It was submitted in February 15, and in the subsequent three years, I've had multiple you know, telephone and direct conversations with the planning officers. Um, and the various extra information required to be submitted, first of all, the uh, Arbor Cultural Report. I wasn't able to see what was displayed here or here very well. But um, despite that, I can only be picked up the planning officer already said. That's the professional to have decided that the tree is of very poor quality. Only one tree um, is um, uh, deemed to be possibly suitable for that um, um, uh, occupation. Um, and in the, in the um, wildlife report, um, the bat survey has decided that it's suggesting that uh, any bats which might be displaced by the T20 coming out would find uh, accommodation in the surrounding um, vegetation which won't be taken down. Um,
also the, the um, back box is put open and that license would have to be um, uh, received as well. Uh, fees on the boundaries, vegetation, shrubbery on the, all around the boundary will be left in place. The apathy is very keen for uh, all of this to be left untouched for the specific purposes of the screening and also for the wildlife. Um, as also you've heard, separation distances, 21 metres between windows, 14 metres to back walls, garden sizes, parking is all complied with. There were seven three bed houses, and, uh, sorry, there are now seven three bed houses and three two bed bungalows. But well, two of the bungalows began life as houses, but they've been reduced in size to bungalows to lessen the impact on surrounding areas and the surrounding houses. Um, the road width, the turning space, the entrance from Cornelius Drive all comply with highway standards. Um, and I might suggest that there is no reason to refuse this. I request that you follow the finances recommendation. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Could you turn off your breakfast, Okay. Is there a board council who would like to speak on this? I can ask you to come forward. If you can turn on the microphone and let us have your name. Certainly, Chair. My name is Councillor Michael Sullivan and I represent Pensley, Beaumont, Arthur Hazel, Airby and Barnsley. Can I just point out to the, the committee um, the two areas that the resident David, David Hall eloquently put um, are regulations GR7 appertaining to trees and he put the, the case forward. And the other, um, the other policy is NC01, NC07, and all that relates to nature conservation. So how, this, how the, the officers can say that it's all right to chop all these trees down and displace bats is, is quite frankly beyond me. So I'd like to start by thanking the committee for coming and attending the site visit, for granting the site visit in the first place, and for the members who took the time and trouble to come along. Because we are talking here, if you look, if you look on the on the screen, we're actually talking about somebody's back garden here. We're not talking about a plot of land which is a field um, with plenty of access. We're talking about somebody's back garden. Now if the if the Committee will just bear with me that I consult technology here. Right, traffic congestion. Now, Cornelius Drive is a cul de sac. And the seven other, now I'm going to come back to this point so the committee will have to bear with me. The seven other residential roads which feed into Cornelius Drive, which is a cul de sac. There's Cornelius Drive, King's Drive two junctions onto Cornelius Drive, there's Exmoor Close, now Shearer Avenue, Anton's Road, Bentley Road, and the Crescent, plus one slip road for houses into Pensby Road. This cul-de-sac is very busy as it, as it is now. It's predominantly three bedroom semi-detached, with some detached properties and very few bungalows. There's lots and lots of cars parking on Cornelius Drive as it is. Now I'm going to come back to this in HS10 and that's why I mention it now. There's over 200 properties in and around this back garden. 200 properties. So how highways can say it's fine to build 10 new dwellings in a back garden which will attract cars into an already congested area is beyond me. Now I'll say to the committee, my wife and I are thinking of downsizing and we're going to be looking for a bungalow. Now if I was to buy, if this, is, if this application is accepted, if I was to buy one of these bungalows, I've got four daughters. I would attract just my family last Sunday, Mother's Day, there were seven cars parked around our house. Now, if I was to buy one of these bungalows, and I'll go through the dimensions in a minute, it's a complete and utter overdevelopment. 
complete and utter. If this had come to the committee with perhaps six bungalows, you wouldn't have had two petitions. We haven't only got one petition in, in objection here tonight. We've got two. Because the residents, quite rightly, are looking at the, the safety aspects of this. So how, and I've got a lot of regard for the planning department, and I've also got a lot of regard myself for this committee. So seven of the proposed dwellings are three bedroomed houses. They're gonna go in a back garden. They're gonna overlook Bentley Close. They're gonna completely destroy the amenities, which is completely against HS10. HS10 appertains, it's got to be in keeping with surrounding areas. It will destroy the back garden amenities of the properties in Bentley Close and the other gardens on um, Cornelius on Cornelius Drive. It's it's completely and utterly. It's dare I say, committee chair. It's speculative building at its worst. They crammed, and I'll go into the, the dimensions. And um, it's crammed as many properties in this area, in this back garden, as they can possibly get. There's off-road parking for one car and the width of the driveway is three metres for one car. Now if I was to say they've driven a coach and horses through HS10 because the only way you're going to get a bin lorry into that confined space is with a coach and cart because you will not get a biffer lorry into that area and I'll, I'll come back to it later. You will not get emergency services into that confined area when people are living there with cars parked. And the only way, as I've stated before on, on Mother's Day, the only way when they're going to get visitors to those properties, the only place they can go to is onto Cornelius Drive. And Cornelius Drive is already over parked. So how highways can say this is okay and the turning circle into this new road that they're going to build is quite beyond me, Chair. Yeah. So, it's already cramped. There is only a two metre gap between the buildings. Okay, it might, it might fit to planning regulations, but come on, committee, come on, would we like to live in, I know I wouldn't, I wouldn't go near it with a barge ball. The roadway is, what was it said, five metres in front of the properties. Lorries, as I've already said, Bin lorries, deliveries, emergency vehicles, ambulances, bungalows there, are they going to attract elderly residents? Get an ambulance in there. They had a, an explosion in Cornelius Drive a couple of weeks ago. I don't know whether committee members read about it. An elderly lady left a, a, an aerosol on, a, on a, um, a gas stove and it blew up. And only the, the properties were, were built pre-war. It would have demolished the, the, the two properties. Now, the emergency services came. The fire brigade, there was an ambulance, the lady in the property is now in hospital. <clears throat> if that happened in there, you wouldn't get a fire engine anywhere near the property or, a, or an ambulance. Um, The only way you'll get a bin lorry in there is for it to reverse in. Again, HS10. You've got, to, you've got to look at HS10 for the amenity, the turning circle, the gardens, the gardens, the amenity of gardens. Those properties, the, the, de, the detached property and the semi-detached property, I will argue, will completely destroy the amenity of the people's back gardens in and around there, and it's not acceptable. There's very little space between the back of bungalow number one, the existing bungalow 26A, which is next door to 26. There's very little space between the back of bungalow one and the existing bungalow, which is 26A, Cornelius Drive. The plan shows a door and French windows on the rear of this bungalow. And these, these windows on these properties will overlook the back gardens of Bentley Drive and, and the back gardens on Cornelius Drive. A lack of privacy. Properties overlooked. All the properties except 
the three bungalows will have, will have windows directly facing existing residences. The new gardens are only 10 metres in length. That's because the developer is cramming as much into this back garden as he possibly can, with no regard whatsoever for the amenities of the people who already live there, and dare I say, anyone who's foolish enough to buy one of these properties. Um, the amenities are gone. The new gardens are only 10 metres in length, length, less than half the length of the gardens in Bentley Road, because when Bentley Road was built, it was built for the amenities of the people who would live there, with sufficient front gardens and back gardens, and off-road parking. The ecological impact, which has already been covered by, by David Hall, the resident, who cares very much about this, and that's why he's presented here tonight. Um, and I've told you the, the policies that, that they have total disregard for. The survey of last May revealed that a wide variety of wildlife inhabit this land, including at least two, bat, two breeds of bats, totally disregarded by um, the Environment Agency, um, although it, it flies in the face of the laws of the land, I might have. There's hedgehogs there, there's different breeds of birds. Even if bird and bat nesting boxes are provided, we believe that such animals will, will desert this area and not return. Building, when you look at this, the building that will take 12 or 18 months. Um, I said residents grudgingly would accept an amount of building that takes place, takes place. But don't forget, all these properties have large back gardens, all of them. So are we going to say there's already 200 houses in this immediate area, in this tight area, in a cul-de-sac? You're going to attract many more cars. Your committee chair, you've got to think about this when you're making your decision tonight. And may I remind the committee, this committee is the last refuge, and we've heard the other cases that have come before the committee tonight. This committee is the last refuge of the residents of Wirral. And you wouldn't be sitting around this table tonight, none of you, nor would I, if we didn't have regard for our residents. So when the planning committee, when the planning department make errors, as, errors of judgment, which I think they have tonight by accepting this, please, as the last refuge, um, you trying to interrupt me there, Steve? No. no. Uh, please, as the last refuge of the residents of Wirral, please reject this greedy planning application. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. I think um, most of the points that have been raised here by David Hall were about the trees and the uh, animals and welfare and birds, etc. Um, can we get somebody to just comment on that? I know we've, we've um, got, uh, within the conditions, we've actually got that there will be bat boxes, etc. We've got a limitation about where the trees can be found. But is there anything else to add to that? Thank you. Through you, Chair. Um, now, the ecology survey was carried out and did note that there were three types of pipistrelle bats present on an occasional basis. So they don't roost there permanently. Um, any development that is carried out will be covered by a license that the applicant would need, the development would need to apply for from Natural England anywhere, which is outside the remit of planning. Um, which is what we can put a planning condition on to say that any displaced bats can roost in bat boxes in the existing trees to be retained, and any new trees to be planted. Um, in terms of the birds, um, again, the, the condition, as you as you stated does limit any development between the bird breeding season, which is from now until the end of August. Okay, and I think uh, one of the other points um, was regarding high rains, so um, there are quite a few points raised there, so if we could just have a comment and then I'll to to everybody. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as you said, I think there are a number of um, points raised on, on highways uh, by the one councillor. Um, around traffic congestion, um, the 
There's a likely um, level of traffic that would be generated by development of this size um, in, in network management terms is negligible. Uh, for 10 properties, we might expect about six vehicle movements during peak hour. Um, so whilst I appreciate um, that the people who live directly adjacent to the site will obviously notice uh, the impact of, adi of additional movements from a new junction at that location. In terms of the, the network in general, um, as I say, that's, uh, that's negligible. Um, in terms of parking, um, the uh, council has uh, parking standards, SPD4 is the parking standards, which um, currently talks about parking in terms of maximum provision. Uh, based on the number of bedrooms on each property, so uh, the two bedroom property will be an average of one and a half um, parking spaces maximum, and a three bedroom property would be uh, two parking spaces maximum. So for a development, uh, for this development, that gives us a total of 18 and a half or you know, 19 parking spaces. Um, each of the properties has one parking space available. Um, I think. Lot two um, has two parking spaces at the drive, which is long enough to accommodate two vehicles. So in total, there's 11 um, parking spaces available. As I say, the SPD talks about parking in terms of maximums. You then have to think about whether or not any overspill parking from this development is going to cause any issues on the highway. If I felt that that was going to cause issues on the highway at this location, the remedy that I've got for that would be to request the condition for waiting restrictions. I don't feel that there's going to be a significant issue caused by the additional parking that may be generated at this location. So I haven't requested any um, conditions for waiting restrictions, but that's obviously a tool that can be used. Um, in terms of the actual um, standards of the construction of the road, it's proposed to construct it to adoptable standards in, in accordance with the council's um, standards for residential roads. Um, so I don't see any ground really to um, object to the application in terms of the construction of the road itself because it will meet with our standards, our approved standards. And so uh, on the whole, I don't have any, any grounds to object to this application, Chair. Okay, there are other points that I would raise, but we're going to First of all, um, both uh, representations were passionate, uh, as one would expect uh, when people are defending their own sort of immediate space. Um, I wasn't trying to interrupt uh, my so I'm going to better than that. Um, but I did sigh because there was repeated sort of comments about the professionalism of our officers. Uh, and they can't defend themselves, so on behalf of the officers who were said to be acting in various ways during some of the contributions. Um, I did sigh a little bit. Um, so I would like to say that from my experience of our officers, they act truly professionally and adapt the policies of this council in a fair, even handed way on every application that comes forward. So I think that does need to be said. Um, I think sites like these are becoming more and more precious, more and more <coughs> needed because we have, I think jointly, I think most people say that Riddle's Green Belt, 46% of the Riddle, I think is the last estimate, is, is in the Green Belt, or designated Green Belt, um, is something that we've been trying to protect for, for long periods of time. So when sites like this come up, that fit the criteria, that have no sort of pre um, determination of what the land should be used for, they have very significantly, numbers of these sites have very significantly to the housing numbers and the housing targets that are set us. And we have had applications here similar to this. And I know every application is on its merits, but I refer back in my own mind to Pearshaw Field in Prenton, where we refused that, and that was a form of playing field. Not only did we